Let's take a look at the toolbars that are around this workspace. You'll find them uh, again on the left side and on top. Any place where there are these little uh, bumps on the side allows you to pick up and drag your toolbars to a new position if you'd like. So I can pick those up and drag it down. You can move them from place to place slide them up and move them around. You can also drag one from the side over to the top and if it needs to it'll make a second row or you could drag it over so that it doesn't need to create a second row. The toolbars themselves contain all the uh, important tools that you're going to need. So for example this is the tools toolbar. It's the one that starts with the pointed arrow selection tool. This is one of the most used tools that you'll have here, but you'll notice in the corner is a little little arrow in the corner and that shows that there's more options. So this tool can be used to select, it can also be used to cut things out in a freeform way. Right under and if you let go, you know it it stays with whichever one it was chosen when you let go. There is the contour editor and perspective and edit gradient tool. This is the brush, which uh, is really your primary drawing tool. The brush indicates that it has pressure sensitivity um, as opposed to the pencil, which is a drawing tool that is just uh, an unvarying line width. There's a type tool there, which is used for type that's actually in the drawing itself, not the typing that you'll use to fill in your dialogue and action. Uh, there's an eraser on there. There's a paint bucket, which allows you to paint and fill, but not only paint, but there's ways to paint things that have not been painted yet, or to unpaint, or to close gaps. We'll deal with those all later. The next in line is a tool to let you draw ellipses and rectangles and lines. This is a dropper tool used for sampling colors. This is a multiple tool for basically navigating around your drawing. There's a hand tool used for panning, uh, your zoom tool, and a way that you can rotate the view, like a light table. There's followed by two of these tools that allow you to transform, a camera tool, and a pivot tool. So there's so many different options on here that the way that you would customize this toolbar, unlike some of the others, is by picking which tool that you want and letting go and letting that tool then take over. So if, again, if you frequently use the rectangle tool, I would want to choose that and have that as an option all the time. And then you could go from brush to rectangle to select and just by tapping each one of them. Now some of the other toolbars you'll see are actually customizable in terms of what's on the button. Let's go next to the file toolbar. And this one has the most basic tools for starting a new project, opening a pre-existing project, saving the project that you're working on, or saving your project as something else so that you can make extra copies, you can save different versions as you're going along. Uh, the next toolbar used very frequently is the editing toolbar. And there you have cut and copy and paste and deleting. And you'll see right now that it says cut panels, copy panels, paste panels, and delete panels. But if you're in the drawing view, and let me jump over to the drawing view. All right, if you're in the drawing view and you've selected something in your drawing, now these tools are to cut the object, copy, or paste or delete in terms of drawing objects. So it works for both. There's also an undo button and a redo button. We've just used this toolbar, which is the workspaces toolbar. Here you can choose from the drawing workspace, timeline workspace, the overview workspace, horizontal, vertical, and PDF view workspace. And I'm going to show you all those workspaces uh, coming up just very shortly. Over here, is where we'll add scenes and panels on this toolbar. You can create a scene, you can create a panel, you can smart add a panel, you can duplicate a panel, 
You could delete a selected panel. You can also work your transitions in here. Now this is one of the toolbars that you can customize. You customize by right clicking and then going to the bottom of the list to customize. And there you'll see an option of some other tools that you could add to your toolbar if you want to. You also have the choice to maybe get rid of some of the things on the toolbar. For example, there's a button on here to delete selected panels. And I prefer not to have that button on my interface because I don't want to accidentally hit it. So to do that, to get rid of that from the toolbar, you just select whatever item you want to move, hit the arrow that points to the other side, and now that tool is available but it's not on my toolbar. So I'm going to press apply and OK. And now you'll notice that I customized the toolbar by taking away that one option. Now this is a uh, play toolbar where it will help you navigate and, and play the animatic that you're watching. There's also the onion skin toolbar here. Onion skin Again, another topic all to itself, but you have options there of turning on the onion skin, choosing how far back you want to go, how far forward you want to go. You could toggle through those drawings on here. And you can also decide which drawing specifically you want to look at through the onion skin. You also have the choice of which toolbars you're going to display and all. So you can go to Windows and then toolbars and you'll notice that some of these have not been checked off yet. If I for example wanted to get rid of the onion skin because I don't use it for example even though I do use it, I just eliminated it and it doesn't appear anymore. If I want to bring it back and go to toolbars and then just make sure I check next to onion skin. By the same token we're about to go into looking at the workspaces. So there is a toolbar specifically for workspaces. So I'm going to tap on that and you'll see that this new toolbar appeared which lets me choose between these workspaces. And you may wonder, well, why would I want to do that? Because you already have the ability to choose through your workspaces. But as we'll see coming up, it gives you an option to add new custom workspaces like this one called Fred which you would then be able to choose your custom workspace very easily and very quickly.